Welcome to Bible class. I need to add a word, Ecclesiastes Bible class, where we are nearing the end of our journey through this great book of Scripture. Twelve chapters. In fact, we are in the twelfth chapter. Going to look today at one single verse, that being verse number eight. In class, when we read the verse, you're going to say, that's remarkable that you would discuss that verse. And it is because verse 8 contains what very well may be the key word in all the book of Ecclesiastes. Let me read you verse 8. I'm sure you have your Bible open in front of you. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity. It is almost as if that's Solomon's concluding remark in Ecclesiastes, except he adds a, uh, what will I call it, postscript, uh, an epilogue, a closing paragraph where he, Paul did this, uh, where I think Solomon validates his ministry, where he gives us his uh, philosophy of writing the book, of teaching us these truths in Ecclesiastes. But that would be, that would be next lesson. For now, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Now, Brother Bagel, how are you going to begin there? Well, the only place to begin is the word vanity. Habel, let me spell it for you. H-E-B-E-L, Habel. We have had it before. Uh, the word is used almost 40 times in the book of Ecclesiastes. What does it mean, preacher? Uh, here are some definitions. Empty. Solomon just said life is empty. Ah, it can mean transitory. Can you give me a little help on that? Temporary. It only lasts for a little while, life. Uh, someone gave this illustration for the word vanity, Habel. You have a little bubble. Your grandchildren or your children are playing uh, with the little, uh, uh, you know, they've got that little strainer and you blow through it and bubbles come. Here's vanity. What's left over when you pop the bubble? What's left over when you pop the bubble? And I'll tell you what's left over. Nothing. Nothing substantial. I, I guess the physicist would say, oh yes, there is a bit of air left over. Life is a bubble, burst, emptiness. Uh, that is a bleak view indeed. But now, when Solomon says, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, we got to remember, he is qualifying this with three more words throughout the book of Ecclesiastes. In fact, these three words, we would call it a prepositional phrase in English, occurs 29 times. 29 times. Under the sun. Under the sun. I don't want to simply review. I have new material for this lesson, but let's go back for a moment. Life under the sun mm -hmm. without considering eternity without factoring heaven into the equation, without, without acknowledging the Creator God, life is empty. That's what Solomon is saying. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He does call himself here the preacher. Uh, I think next lesson we're going to spend a little more time on that word, Preacher, uh, it is in Hebrew. I want to pronounce it correctly. Koheleth, Koheleth, and preacher, what in the world does that mean? Only used seven times uh, in the Bible. K 
collector, as if he's collecting bits of advice. And my, my, at times, pure wisdom from God, a collector of little nuggets of truth. It also, Koheleth can also mean the uh, one who assembles. One, someone called it the master of assemblies. Preacher, that's why it's called preacher. Uh, the word, the Greek word for church is ekklesia. And uh, the word preacher here, it is literally that word in the Greek translation of the Old Testament. He is the one who gathers God's people to listen, to hear, and to learn. Vanity of vanity, said the preacher. That's Solomon. He's identifying himself as the preacher. All is vanity. Three more words. Under the sun. Here's what he just said. And I think we're going to have to agree with him. Without the Lord Jesus, life loses meaning. Life, look, uh, Paul wrote a little line in the book of Colossians. By Jesus, by him who is the creator, all things consist. And that word consists, the Greek, all things hold together. All things have continuity. All things consist. Without Jesus, life just under the sun, apart from, it is basically empty, fruitless, transitory, Solomon is absolutely right. Preacher, how would I live a life that's not confined to under the sun? Listen to Colossians 3.1, written to us Christians. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. That'll help your view of life. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Oh, what words those are. The author and the finisher of our faith. So, um, Solomon here gives us a summary of life apart from the Lord. Emptiness, transitory, temporary, vain. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. That, that in a way sums up the entire book of Ecclesiastes from man's point of view under the sun. Let me give you some examples very quickly. Colossians, <laughs> on my mind, seek ye the things that are above. Ecclesiastes 1.14 Solomon said, I've seen all the works that man has done under the sun. And behold, all is vanity. That implies Jesus gives meaning to my job, to my work. Oh boy. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. You'll remember Solomon tried different life experiments to find meaning. I said in my heart, heart go to. I will prove you with mirth. We're going to have fun, joy, gladness. Uh, 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 therefore, enjoy pleasure. Just go out and have all the fun you want. And guess what? This also is vanity. No wild Friday night with the boys. No bout of debauchery and alcoholism. And, no, no. It's all emptiness. It's all emptiness. And, and then, and, and uh, Ecclesiastes 2.15, he discusses death. He says, death happens to the wise man. Death happens to the fool. I, I really don't see any advantage then in gaining with this also is vanity. If there is no afterlife, if there is no life in eternity above the sun, all is vanity. Everybody's going to die anyway. Listen to this. Without the Lord in your life. Uh, Ecclesiastes 2.17, Solomon said, I hated life. I hated life uh, because the work that's done under the sun is heavy, it's grievous, it's frustrating. All is vanity. All is vanity. And had we the time, we could go all the way through the book of Ecclesiastes, one view after another. All is vain. Listen to 
Let me give you one or two more. I have a page full. Ecclesiastes 5.10 He that loveth silver, money, wealth, riches. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. He that loveth abundance more, more, more with increase. This will be vanity. It's vain. It's empty. Money cannot give you happiness, purpose, and full Fulfillment. My, my, my. Uh, I need to show you something now. Life under the sun. I've got my little chart handy here. I'm going to put at either end of my chart, I don't know if you can see it, the lighting in the room is not ideal. Uh, those are parentheses markers. Now, Solomon begins the book in Ecclesiastes 1, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And now we are seeing that he closes the book in Ecclesiastes 12, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, inclusio. Let me write that word. Some of you may be new to class. This is a literary device called inclusio, where you begin and end a body of literature with the same theme, the same thought. And what is that thought? V-A-N-I-T-Y. It is all vain. It is all empty from beginning to end under the sun. So we must learn of God, meet God, know God, Come to have fellowship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And then, and only then, will we find real meaning in life. Back to my chart. The opening inclusio, Ecclesiastes 1, 2, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. The ending, uh, parenthesis mark, Ecclesiastes 12, 8, our text, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Vanity. Mm -mm -mm. Now, some things that Solomon has said that I want to take the Old Testament view under the sun and compare it with a New Testament view with Jesus on the throne of one's life. Listen to this. Ecclesiastes 2.11 Solomon said, I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought. He was a builder par excellence. And on the labor that I had labored to do, he didn't really do the work, but he had thousands of workers in his employ. And behold, all was vanity. There was no profit under the sun. All my works were vain. Now listen to Paul. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, which I might add very quickly, is my life verse. I love this verse of Scripture. Uh, when I autograph a Bible, when I sign my name, I always I imagine I've written a reference, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, thousands of times through the years. Here it is. Solomon says, all my work is vain, empty. Therefore, my beloved brethren, Paul's writing, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, not with work under the sun, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, somebody get an amen ready, your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In the Lord. Mm-mm-mm. This is Solomon's sum of all of life, vanity of vanities. Said the preacher, all is vanity. And uh, that's his summary, again, under the sun. Listen to Paul, his summary of life. Paul wrote these words at the end of his life. He may have been dead within a few hours. I have fought a good fight. Life was a fight. Paul's declaring victory. I have finished my course. Life is a race. Paul has achieved 
the goal line. I have kept the faith. Uh, life is a deposit. God gave me faith. God gave me His Word. And, and I have kept it. I've been faithful and true. Three terms of victory. I fought a good fight. Finished my course. I've kept the faith. And so God has laid up for me a crown. A crown of righteousness. Which the righteous judge, the Lord will give me at that day. Solomon, life is empty. Paul, life is victorious. If you're laboring in the work of the Lord. Would somebody, would somebody say amen right there? Jesus almost agrees with this life under the sun business. Matthew 16, 26, I believe it is. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Jesus just said there's no profit if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul. Lose your own soul. Preacher, how do you view this? Do you think your life has been vain? I do not. By the grace of God, the mercy of God, the provision of God, uh, God saved my soul. Yeah, I do. Here's how I would answer I'm using Paul's words, 2 Timothy 1, 12. I know whom I believed, and I am persuaded he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I do not think life is in vain. He will reward me for my faithfulness. An old Puritan. I believe his name was Henry Martin. That's spelled M-A-R-T-Y-N, I think. He said this. Oh, what vanity God has written on all the things of the world under the sun. Ecclesiastes is a very good book. It says pleasure, vain. Money, vain. Sexual promise, vain. Building projects, vain. Education, vain. All is vain apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we're all agreeing with that. But here's a problem. Knowing we've read vain, vanity, Hebel, uh, 38 times in the book of Ecclesiastes, every one of us, every one of us, I hope you'll agree, is still attracted in some way to this old world. First John chapter 2 defines the elements of this world. Think about it. The lust of the eyes, that's pretty. The lust of the flesh, expect that would feel good. And the pride of life makes me number one. Those are the allurements of the world. So much so, the Holy Ghost had to have John write, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You've got to make a choice, Christian. If you've got the love of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Preacher, that's just for carnal folks. No. He wrote that to three groups of Christians. Fathers, young men, and little children. The world allures us all. Oh, God help us to see as never before. It's empty. It's vain without the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. It boils down to this. We got to make a choice. Am I going to make him the Lord of my life? Or am I going to go, a, the Old Testament words, very strong, a whoring, prostituting after the things of the world? God says, you'll make me your God or you'll follow the gods of this world. Preacher, are you denying there are not pleasures out there? Oh, no, there are pleasures of sin. The Bible acknowledges it. Hebrews 11, 25. But only for a season. Moses chose rather to suffer with God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Yeah, but just serving God, how boring. Oh, no. No, no, no. Psalm 16, 11. Jesus is talking. We believe it's a messianic psalm. But he says to his Father, in thy presence is fullness of joy. The more I get close to him, the more I'm around him, fullness 
of joy. At thy right hand, Father, there are pleasures. It means sweet things twice. There are pleasures forever, ever more. Mm -mm -mm. Verse number eight. Preacher, that sounds hopeless. It is not hopeless. Cynical. Uh, that's heretical. That, a heretic. Oh no, that's realistic. If you're looking at life without God being in the set, He's the hub that holds all of the spokes, the rim of life together. Someone said this, vanity of vanities, life is empty. And then on the other end of the, uh, of the spectrum, there's God. I love this. Write it down. The ultimate permanence. Life is fleeting. God is eternal. Life is empty. God is filled with me. God, the ultimate permanence. Where's your focus? Brother Bagwell, uh, class member, where's your focus? On the things of the world or on the Lord Jesus Christ? Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity and by the way he says that at the end of the paragraph we studied last lesson that picture of old age and death and uh, oh my how terrible death must be apart from the lord god almighty i have saved about seven or eight minutes this ties into verse 8, but it's something, I studied it last night. I'm in revival uh, at a church uh, about 30 minutes away, and, and uh, I got into this last night. I couldn't even go to sleep. I got so excited about how Solomon seems to tie Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and even to some extent Genesis chapter 3, how he ties it into the book of Ecclesiastes. Let me give you an example. All right. I'm going to take out the word vanity. Here is another sample of inclusio. Ecclesiastes 1 verses 4 through 7. He begins the book this way. One generation passes away and another comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun riseth the sun goes down. Uh, the wind blows toward the south, turns toward the north. And, and uh, the rivers run to the sea. And yet the sea is never full. That's creation language. Sun, water, air, rivers. That's creation language. And then chapter 12, remember in Clusio, chapter 1, chapter 12, Remember now thy creator. That's creation language for sure. In the days of thy youth. Verse 2, chapter 12, verse 2. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars, that's creation language. Sun, light, moon, stars, be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. Creation language built in two the book of Ecclesiastes. Let me go a little further if I have time. Compare these verses. Ecclesiastes 3.20, I will read it to you. Everything goes to one place. All are of dust and all turn to dust again. Talking about dust, my lips get dry. Excuse me. Ecclesiastes 3.20, everything's going back to dust. Genesis 3.19, God said in the, Adam, in the sweat of your face you'll eat bread till you return to the ground. Out of it you were taken, dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. If that's not a quote, it is a direct reference. Ecclesiastes 3.20 to Genesis 3.19. Listen to Ecclesiastes 7.29. I'll just give these as long as I can. Lo, Here's something I found, says Solomon. God made man upright, but they, mankind, have sought many inventions. And the word inventions, they're sinful 
inventions. Let me tell you what Ecclesiastes 7, 29 says. God made man perfect, but man ruined himself and is now following a sinful life. Pretty sure that's not in the Bible. Yes, it is. Genesis 1, 27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, man and fe male and female created, and then man fell, man sinned, the serpent. Oh my, that's language, doctrine, theology based on Genesis chapter number one. Listen to Ecclesiastes. I'm going to read from chapter seven, beginning at verse 25. I applied my heart to know, search out, Seek wisdom and the reason of things. That's what I wanted to know. And to know the wickedness of folly and sin. That was what Eve faced there in the Garden of Eden. The tree of the knowledge of good. To know and search out wisdom and evil. To know the folly, the foolishness, and the madness of things. Genesis 3, 6. When the woman saw the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, a tree to make one wise, she took and ate and gave to her husband, and he also did eat. Creation language in the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 2.5 Solomon said, I'm, I'm looking for happiness. I'm looking for purpose in me. I made me gardens and orchards. I planted trees and all of them, fruit trees of all kinds. It was all vain. Genesis 1, 29, God said, I have given you every herb bearing seed on the face of the earth and every tree, which is the fruit of the tree, you, I gave you an orchard as well. Genesis vocabulary. In the book of Ecclesiastes, listen. Bara, it, it is a Hebrew verb that means this. To make something out of nothing. It did not previously exist. To make something out of nothing. Seven times in Genesis 1 and 2. And God created. The first verb in the Bible. In the beginning God created. Bara, the heaven and the earth. And you know what? In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. Remember now thy creator. That's a link to the word bara. It is the word bara. Creation language shown by vocabulary. If I had time, I don't. Asa, God made. A call to eat. They ate of the forbidden fruit. All the way through the book, Solomon talks about eating. Amal, it's a word for labor, but it's tiring labor, painful labor, exhausted all the way through the book. Kara, to call or to name. Adam named the animals and, and God called uh, uh, this. That, and, uh, and then uh, there are even more. But here's one I want to share with you before class ends. Habel, back to our text. Vanity of vanity, said the preacher. All is vanity. Hebel, H-E-B-E-L. Oh, if I had time, I'd draw it on my poster board. I'm going to run out of time. Hebel, that is the Old Testament name. Abel. Abel, same consonants. Hebel, vanity. Abel, Solomon chose as his key word 38 times. Hebel, which is the Old Testament name, Abel. And what about Abel? Fleeting. Only here for a while. His brother killed him, slaughtered him. A transitory life was able. It could be the whole thing of Ecclesiastes is built on the Cain Abel biography. Oh, preacher, are you sure? Listen to Ecclesiastes 7 15. These things have I seen in the days of my vanity. Listen, there's a just man that perished in his righteousness. That's Abel. And there's a wicked man that prolongs his life. Even in his week, that's Cain. That's Cain. Serpent language. We know about the serpent, the tempter, in Genesis chapter 3. And then in Ecclesiastes, twice, Solomon illustrates with serpent language. My, my, my. And, and through the book, of, I'm going to run out of time. Through the book of Genesis, labor and death. Toil and death. Those are the main things, and so is it. In Ecclesiastes. Why 
his life vain. Why are they? Because of S-I-N, sin. Be saved today. Jesus will forgive you.